Uh, I'm a PhD in mathematics, so probably you have much more experience in like, applied data science than me. Uh, and I, I did my PhD in France, and then I, I was for two years at Oxford as a research fellow, doing some mathematics. Uh, and currently, I go back to, to, to my home country, and where I'm an assistant professor and also a member of Scientific Advisory Board, meaning at DeepSense.io. So what's DeepSense.io <laughs> right now? Uh, so that's a company do, doing uh, data science uh, in a couple of ways. Uh, first of all, we have our own products that will appear like uh, in the background because we're also trying to make our services into products. Uh, but we're also doing commercial products and we're trying to compete in Kaggle com competitions. So that's just two examples of our successes. Uh, so the first one, just to explain it, uh, that was right whale recognition where the, the idea was that there are 500 uh, right whales, North Atlantic right whales, and you would like to actually detect them and recognize them um, by having the aerial photographs taken. So that was pretty hard because up to that point, uh, you only had like more, some kind of researchers who need a lot of training to actually be able to r distinguish between uh, right whales, like, like whether it's Steve, Steven or like Dave, and like they, they went like through like you got an album and you basically okay that's Steve no maybe that's Dave and they went like that, and you have like five hundred or five hundred of them so that that was pretty tricky, uh, and so what, what we did and which got us the first place was some kind of like Facebook for right whales, so <laughs> and it worked and it worked and the the, se the second example is from DSTL and that stands for I guess. Defense Science Technology Laboratory. Uh, and that was about analyzing and detecting different things uh, on the images from the satellite, uh, meaning you'd like to detect whether you are looking at buildings, trucks, roads, crops, uh, whatever comes to your mind. Uh, yeah, and we were fourth. So, so and, and we're taking part actively in many different uh, Kaggle competitions. So the knowledge I'm trying to share with you, uh, so, so oh, I should mention that the, these slides are not mine, meaning they're the slides of my team, and those are the lessons learned the hard way competing with, in those competitions. So what I will be talking about is uh, best and worst practices uh, for model training, reviewing history, teamwork, reproducibility, model deployment of machine learning models uh, that we actually apply in practice. And uh, we, all, we learned it the hard way, meaning we did all the, all the mistakes, and finally we got it how to do it correctly. Uh, okay, so let me start with that. Uh, so my working example would be, so, oh, so maybe I should mention, uh, DeepSense is specializing especially in computer vision and image recognition. We're doing pre other things as well, but we're good at that. Uh, so my working example that you should keep in mind is that let's say we have this, uh, we want to classify animal images. We're taking the iNaturalized data set. That's uh, data set of 5,000 different species, if I remember correctly. And we just pick three of those, moose, bison, and burr. Uh, and we, we, in the background, we'll have some model based on ResNet architecture. That doesn't matter. Uh, and say we want to, uh, we want to classify uh, those and learn on, on this data set. Uh, so, so the first thing you start with is uh, model training. So the bad practice is that you only use text logs. So you, you may only see stuff like that. Uh, but that doesn't tell you everything. And more, moreover, we are humans, so we look like images and look at those. Uh, so it's much better, at least for me and my team, if you had something like that, meaning you, you really have a um, graph of how your models are learning and what's the learning rate, uh, what's the accuracy, and stuff like that. Uh, so all the pictures I'll be taking from that are from the product I will mention at the end, which is called Neptune, and I will tell more about it at the very end. Uh, right now, what I'm telling you about is uh, what's our experience uh, with uh, training models for different problems and uh, what's convenient for us, especially if you want to share with your colleagues uh, the experience you're making. Uh, so let's say you start training your model, and then you want to interact with a training. Uh, so the bad practice is that you restart your training from scratch every single time. Uh, m meaning, yeah. The, the best way to actually do it is, you, first of all, you keep tracks of good results you're getting. And moreover, you tune your 
training along the way if you see that it's not learning well enough. So, so let me show you that example. So this is what we can do in a Neptune. That's the, that's the interface we're using pretty easily. Uh, and you see that, so, so you had the model and that was learning to some, you see the accuracy. And at some point we changed the learning rate. And that's, uh, that, that's, the, uh, th that's this uh, thing exploding and, and then restabilizing. So, so you can fine tune it along the way and it allows you to save really a lot of time. Mm. Okay, the next thing which is good for us, like humans, uh, is visual debugging because it's always good to have pictures in front of you. Uh, so if, it doesn't, if you don't use uh, visual debugging, then you probably have only limited uh, insight into what's being good and bad. Uh, so at the picture here, you have, so, so re recall, we, we, we are analyzing this um, iNaturalized data set. And this is what came out when we do it, because, so, so this is clearly a bison, and it tells you that with 99%, this is actually a bear, right, horses. Uh, so the problem was that in a data set we, we supplied, uh, all, all the black and white images were actually bears. So that's why it, it, it tells us that, that uh, we have a bear here. Uh, so of course you, you can like, when, when you see it and when you think about it, then you can easily fix it because you can just um, ma make some um, tuning to the colors. Like uh, if you perturb the colors a little bit, like with a data set, then, then it will be, work, uh, be working fine. But in order to see that, you'll have to really look at uh, what, what's not working and what, what's misclassified as an image. Um, Okay, uh, also, so you have like hyperparameter tuning, uh, and especially that that's important when you have a team of people and uh, you have a couple of GP, GPUs and you want to monitor those. Um, and it's not really a good idea to like <coughs> ask who's, who's using what and uh, tune everything by manually. So some of the good practices are like random or grid search or version optimization when you assume some kind of probability on the hyperparameters. Uh, that, that's some of the standard ways we do. Uh, then you review the history. So, so say we already trained the model and you, see, you want to see what, uh, what we got out of it. Uh, so bad practice is basically you have no history of experiments and you're manually logging those informations into say something like Excel or like anything you, you imagine. Uh, and of course a good practice is to, you keep track of everything. You have your source code, data parameters, metrics, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so so the, the image you see here is a, a bad example and we have something more like that. So uh, you have different kind of jobs we're doing, uh, tags, uh, we have uh, train losses, validations, and like you, 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 all, all the content you would want like, to see and uh, you can expand everything out of that. And, and then share with your friends to, uh, who are working on the same thing so they can see what, uh, what were you doing and what went wrong at some point. Yeah, so uh, coming back to teamwork. Uh, so bad practice is that you have a team of uh, data scientists and each of them is working separately and everyone basically is doing the same thing. And then after like, reinventing the, the same wheel, they basically talk to each other and then you learn that, uh, oh, you, you did the same thing. Uh, and also there, there are also problems with like, uh, ad hoc uh, access to resources. And this, that's the problem with like, hey, who's taking GPU number two? Oh, that's Dave, maybe I, I shouldn't use it. Uh, so th the best way to, is actually to have the transparency of like everything, both in like terms of resources, uh, experiments, and also some kind of like management of the environment so that you can, you, you can see like who's using what and uh, who's, who's doing what at that point, particular point of time. Mm. Uh, then w when it comes to model reproducibility, because so, so say Dave invented something and you want to, you want to go, go to Steve and say that, hey, you can do that this, uh, the same thing. Then the problem is that if you only base your model uh, uh, on your memory, then probably you will forget. And this, this, the, the image should uh, tell you that uh, <laughs> it's not always the best way to reproduce the things from your memory because you can forget some parts of it. 
and you would like to have some kind of automatic experiment reproduction in, in order to really uh, be able to reproduce exactly the same things. Mm. Then the last part of actually having your model trained uh, is model deployment. So set, you, you build a model and then you want someone else to use it. So the bad practice is that you just uh, give it away, just throw it over the wall and just, hey, this is my model, I'll try to use it. Um, <laughs> and, and then it's like throwing a gift, uh, the unwanted gift. And a good way is to automate the whole process in a way that will be very easy to deploy at a different platform. So uh, here you have some uh, screenshots from, from Neptune again, where you can specify things like number of GPUs, number of cores, memory, disk size, disk type, uh, and stuff like that, uh, which, which gives you pr pretty, good, uh, pretty good approach to model deployment. Uh, yeah, so, so I'm coming here to the Neptune and what it does. Uh, so actually, Neptune is our DevOps platform from like doing everything uh, collaborative, and so that you have like both visual visual platform for doing all the experiments, which you can share with your friends. Uh, they can see the history of experiments. Uh, they you can also. Uh, so, so you have to provide, the, it doesn't do any data science for you, meaning you have to provide your own data, your own code. It only allows you to easily fine tune those hyperparameters when you define them or uh, play with like learning rates or stuff like that. Uh, and then you have like easy access to manage all of the, your experiments. Uh, and basically we, we built Neptune out of like uh, in-house, out of our own needs in the Kaggle competitions because um, we wanted to make everything manageable and, and that was the best way to do it. So we turned it into a product and now, uh, I think that's the, yeah. Uh, and now that's available freely. So, so that's like, um, I invite you to go to Neptune Go and it's like very easily accessible public version that you can use right now. Uh, and we're at the very early stage, so all feedback is welcome, and if you want to use it, like, on the, especially on the more, more global scale, say you have a team of like five or ten people, then we would be very happy to talk with you to how we can collaborate on that. Thank you. Mm -hmm.